This is a scripted dialogue based on conversations I've had with a mixture of conservative Christian ministers. So what do you do with the resurrection? I say it's a story. It didn't really happen. What do you think happened to the body? The Romans had guards at the tomb. Okay, first of all, we have no idea if any of this actually happened. This is what religious people with a religious agenda said happened. Now, I have no problem conceding that Jesus was crucified and probably buried in Joseph's tomb, but there could easily be a naturalistic explanation for the missing body. Like what? Okay, like the Romans put the body in the tomb, but then they realized, uh-oh, you know what's going to happen? These Christians are going to make a shrine out of the tomb. And that's going to encourage them to keep their movement going. You know, visiting the tomb of their martyr. Let's shoo the people away, roll away the stone, get rid of the body, and then they won't make it a shrine. It'll just be an empty tomb, and their movement won't be encouraged. I think that's what probably happened, very likely. But the punishment for those guards would have been death, failing in their orders to guard against anyone stealing the body. No, no, the guards didn't decide that for themselves. They got their orders from their superiors, from Pontius Pilate or whoever. He's sitting in his palace and realized that Christians might well make a shrine out of the tomb. Go over there, shoo people away, get rid of the body, just leave an empty tomb. I think that's what happened, or at least that's a very reasonable, natural explanation. The body being gone is no proof at all that he rose from the dead. But the Bible speaks about one of the guards intending to kill himself for having allowed the body to disappear. And an angel appeared and talked him out of it. That would refute your explanation. Why would he want to kill himself if that was what he was ordered to do to get rid of the body? Hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. But I don't remember reading such a passage about the guard and an angel. I, I must have missed that one. I don't remember that. Later on, I looked very hard for it, but I could not find any such passage. Maybe I'm the one remembering it wrong. Okay, but your original question was, what do I do about the resurrection? It's kind of hard to argue about exactly what happened. There's no video. <laughs> That was a long time ago. We weren't there. People tell stories. You know, 1.8 billion Muslims believe Jesus was not resurrected. But this is how I answer the question of Jesus' resurrection. This is my logic. He couldn't have resurrected unless he really was the Son of God. And he could not have been the Son of God because he taught too many wrong things. Seriously wrong things. Hmm, he taught wrong things. C.S. Lewis, he was an atheist when he started out, converted to Christianity. Basically, his approach is that when he comes across a difficult passage in the Bible, or wrong things, as you say, his approach is to start with the reality of the resurrection and go from there. Yeah, in other words, Jesus was resurrected, therefore anything he said must be true. See, for me, my approach is the exact opposite. I start with his teachings, and if he taught wrong things, then he was not the Son of God, and therefore was not resurrected. My approach follows Lewis's. I believe in the resurrection, so I believe that eventually I'll understand the explanations for these issues that you bring up, like slavery or rape in the Bible. But there is no explanation as to how slavery is okay or rape is okay. Slavery and rape are wrong, categorically wrong. That is the answer, that this is wrong, that this is not God speaking in the Bible. If I ever became convinced that the Bible supports slavery or rape, at that point I would leave. Yeah, well, to me, I've long since arrived at that point. I see the Bible has no problem with slavery as an institution and no problem with rape in wartime situations. Otherwise, it wouldn't refer to women as plunder. 
Let me find the quote. Deuteronomy 2014. But the women, the little ones, the livestock, and all that is in the city, all its spoil, you shall plunder for yourself. Yeah, but I think linguistics and semantics are important. It's so underplayed. Plunder does not necessarily mean rape. I think the exact opposite. Semantics are overplayed. <laughs> overplayed. You constantly use semantics to try to make a passage mean something far rosier than what the normal understanding of the words would be. At any rate, on the resurrection, you start with trust in the biblical accounts, and so you believe it must have happened. Whereas I don't trust the biblical accounts and believe it did not happen. We should talk about Jesus and exactly what he taught. I think that's the key to whether one should believe in the resurrection or not, whether Jesus' teachings were really wise or not.